Hello my soccer universe. Yesterday the European Court of Justice uh, released a verdict on the Super League or the way that the Super League was uh, pushed away by UEFA and FIFA and the clubs were duly to be punished. And it had everyone a little bit of uproar. Everyone spun it a little bit their way. And as I promised in the short video that I made uh, on it, I decided to take a little bit of time and share my thoughts on what this verdict actually means and where this might lead us in the future. The short answer is I don't think the Super League will be coming, at least not in the proposed way that it will be coming. However, it might point into the future of how our European competitions may look like in the years to come. So that's the gist of it. But there's a little bit more to it. For, first of all, what the verdict says, and I tried to already mention it, it basically says that FIFA and UEFA have abused their powers. They're kind of a monopoly there. Uh, and they just cannot deny a comp competition that the clubs want to do just because uh, they're FIFA and UEFA, that the system that they didn't approve of this competition is not correct and they need to rework the system. Now, this is going back to when the court case was filed. Meanwhile, uh, UEFA have updated that system on which we don't have a ruling, but there is now a framework in place, a framework of rules and regulation. What happens if clubs decide to make their own um, league or their own competition? And on that one, we don't have a ruling. We only have that the old status quo, that was not correct. How it, how it was done, that UEFA and FIFA came out, no, you need FIFA approval, we ban all the players, the clubs are banned, blah, 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 and punished. That cannot happen. So, it also says then in, you know, they kind of pull, pull out the more in layman's terms that uh, while UEFA and FIFA have abused their power, this does not automatically mean that the Super League project has to be approved. So, I think these are the key observations here. Now, uh, if I push, spin this a little bit and see what is going to happen, I think it's almost, I don't want to say it's a non-entity, this uh, case, because it goes back to uh, old, um, you know, to an old case that is not really uh, current and anymore. But it gives us also a little bit of clarity that maybe, and maybe here Barca and Real Madrid were the only ones so far who have come out pro Super League, since they're the only ones that still remain in the Super League. And this is very much spun by Florentino Perez of Real Madrid and their company A22, however, how, how, how it's called. They, of course, means, yeah, the monopoly of FIFA is done uh, and UEFA is, is, is done. And here's a Super League and here's a proposed format that we would like to have. However, I also see that there are many other clubs that have already said, no, nah, we don't want to have anything to do with that because the backlash they fear is not that great. There are also laws in Italy and England and potentially France that say that clubs cannot take part in competition. This is law, cannot uh, take part in competitions that are not sanctioned by FIFA or and or UEFA. So uh, there are loads of hurdles to jump. We already know that in the original Super League proposal, uh, there were no German clubs, there were no French clubs in there. Uh, we know that PSG didn't want to do it because uh, Nasser Al Khalifa was more or less uh, worried about his own thing. You know, he was vice president of UEFA, there's a Qatar World Cup, he didn't want to lose face. And German clubs, we see it already when an investor is trying to come into uh, the German league, how fans are not liking that at all. So many, many hurdles to jump there. It's not a straightforward case in any way. However, let's look at this proposal. The proposal is, and it's fu uh, funnily enough, it's a three-tiered system. Uh, the current European competition is also a three-tiered system. However, this one is a little bit more hierarchical because at the moment that uh, you can fall from the Champions League to the Europa League and you can fall from the Europa League to the Conference League, but every year you need to qualify for these competitions. This is now what's changed. The big clubs do not like jeopardy and with the big clubs i literally mean the two big spanish giants who are investing a lot of money are not doing uh, their due diligence and want to have more money and that's their way to get it i mean we saw barcelona one day after a um 
league match flying all the way to the US to play just uh, 24 hours later a friendly match where they cash in 5 million euros which uh, honestly is very little for for them but they're totally cash strapped and Real Madrid have a similar idea now um, that big clubs don't like jeopardy this goes back at the genesis of the champion the champions league back to 1987 when in the first round of the then european cup the italian champions and the spanish champions napoli and the real madrid played against each other and one of the big favorites is already out which uh silvio berlusconi then milan president said this cannot be and he was basically the driving force behind the Champions League that with a group stage there are a little bit more guaranteed matches and now it's more 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 when they have more guaranteed matches we also don't want to have the jeopardy that an off year in the league means that we are out of it now I have my thoughts on that I think if you do if you don't keep your house in order and I'm looking squarely here at the Catalan Giants uh, I think you should be punished for that and uh, in a sporting way you have to go through some rough years and then work yourself back up again however so we have this three-tiered system of 16 teams each both are split in two groups of eight which means uh, you get 14 guaranteed games and then the top four play out um, at least in the top league uh, play out a quarter, quarter final to a final. Uh, I think it's the same amount of games that are now in the new proposed Swiss system where we have eight uh, games in the uh, main league and then we have, you know, with, 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 with playoffs. It, it works out roughly the same. It also says it does not replace the uh, leagues, the national leagues. However, uh, you can, we have to qualify through that and it's kind of an open system. So. The top league, there's a quarterfinal, there, 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 there's a playoff, the bottom teams get relegated in each. Um, and then for the lower level, there are supposedly 20 spots to be distributed. However, where teams can qualify through the na na national leagues. However, crucially, if you're in, I think they call it the star tier, that's the top tier. If you're in there, you need to have three re re relegations, so you have three guaranteed years at least to be in there. And this is the amount of jeopardy, and, and this is limiting the jeopardy for the Giants that you need to be really, really bad to fall out of this competition. And I can see this happening that this will be in the Champions League, that there is maybe a tiered system where certain teams on sporting merit will stay up. And yes, you can get relegated into a lower tier, but you know, the fallback, you have kind of two safety nets if you're a top club. It also would, in theory, allow a small club to qualify for a wider national league, have a really good run in the, I think they call it the blue tier, then get into the gold tier, and you have guaranteed income this way. Um, so this is a system that I think this will be in discussion. This has been in discussion already. Uh, and Andrea Agnelli, uh, when he was still the head of the ECA and so on, before he fell from, from grace and that he could have implemented in part of this new Champions League in a way. So have that in mind and this will come up. I mean, for now we have the Swiss model. I'm actually, I want to be open-minded about that one because uh, one thing is true that the group stage needed some work and maybe the Swiss model will give, give us this since they have also an implied seeding system there. That could be interesting, I would have to say. But, you know, uh, we have to see how it works out. It's probably not as clean as with the groups. Uh, however, it will give us a little bit more variation in, in there. Uh, I have my own thoughts on how I would set up a group stage or whatever. Uh, I personally, and I've made a long time ago a video about that, if you make groups of four, uh, I really like the double round in the middle. And I would like to have that with three double rounds, like kind of, and then home, home and away and the three points are given based on the aggregate score and if it's tied after 90 minutes there's a penalty shoot to, to give it an extra point and so on. I think this would be a little bit more interesting because it keeps it right there and then and you can also see it in some other way that works out. But you know, that's beside the point. Uh, that's what I would like to see and I'm for the Swiss system. I want to be open-minded about it and see because you know, uh, in, in the end it comes down to the knockout stage anyway. What I would have liked to see, though, is that teams from the Europa League can actually make it into the Champions League, but not by winning it for the next year, 
but that the group winners in the Europa League, for instance, get a matchup against the third place team from the Champions League to continue further on. I think that would be interesting, but I think we are running into trouble. Uh, and same thing then for the conference, but we're running into trouble there. Uh, with dates, you would probably have to make one um, uh, one game playoffs or whatever. That is something I would like to see. Um, now they have it that, okay, see, season by season, you could move on. Okay, might be interesting. I think it's an interesting format. The question is, of course, how will this all be distributed? Um, again, I want to be open about that. The Champions League, I think, should be untouchable. Uh, the double safety net, I am not so sure I necessarily want to see. Uh, but I can see that there might be some sort of guarantee for the bigger teams because, yeah, I mean, we want to see Real Madrid. What I don't want to see, however, is, for instance, uh, let's say Manchester United qualify. And I'm not choosing picking now Man Manchester United. I'm just saying because they had their cur a current case. They had a good season last time. They qualify for the Champions League based on merit or, let's say, uh, because of merit, they're up there. And then they stink it up. And they're still in the champ championship champ championship league next year. That uh, I don't want to see. That, so there's something to say about it that you know, for one year, yes, Manchester United probably is not a Champions League team this year, but they have qualified five years, so they can play in it. Um, however, if they would now basically say them of being Champions League and also qualify the next one and still uh, stink in the league, there's something that's not quite right. So give or take, maybe um, we have to see. I mean, yes, we all like the big teams playing each other. However, um, the joy of seeing them is that it's a rare occasion. If we see every week the big teams playing each other, then even, uh, let's say, a Barcelona Inter matchup does not become special anymore. And I probably could have picked on Barcelona, but I already picked on them before. So uh, just have that also in mind. However, there's a second part of this ruling that I find interesting. And that was brought up, and I think this is probably points a little more to the future. This ruling would potentially allow that we can have competitions that span, maybe not the entire European continent, but one or two countries. Let's say France and Italy want to do it together. They could make their own league, or it is not uh, immediately forbidden, so there needs to be a framework for that. I'm not saying that Liga and Serie A should merge. I don't think that there's any reason for that. However, this would open it up for smaller leagues. And I'm looking here, for instance, at um, the Eredivisie and the Belgian Pro League. They are those two leagues probably are made to and they are in discussions to really have a Benelux league to kind of lift yourself. Same thing would be a Scandinavian league, and I think there's another video in there for me. Um, I would think that Austria could go it with Switzerland or you go with Hungary and the Czech Republic kind of, you know, make, makes, make slightly bigger leagues for the smaller nations that then could compete with the big leagues, kind of, sort of, maybe. Uh, the appeal would be that just, just because the teams that are dominant from now are dominant because they come from bigger countries that have more financial might. That might open up an avenue for smaller countries Let's band together, like make an old Yugoslav league again or something like that or make a Balkan league and this might get interesting. You might actually uh, do something there and you know in ice hockey, the Austrian ice hockey league contains teams from Hungary, from I think uh, Italy for sure. They have also Slovenia in there and I think they used to have a Czech team in there as well. So open it up a little bit make it a little bit more powerful and that might actually balance things out and i'm looking at the benelux league especially because you know big teams like anderlecht and ajax and feyenoord and so on uh they are losing ground because they're not big enough it also would maybe allow portugal to go with la liga or the scottish premiership to go with the premier league just saying i mean there are new avenues there that i think are way more interesting than a reworked Champions League because I think the only way to get balance back in is probably through merging of leagues because the power of the Premier League is suffocating the rest however putting the powers together that might actually level things out again 
that's what I want to see. So those are my thoughts on the proposed Super League. Let me know what you think about it. Again, don't go crazy and say it's all the devil, blah, 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 blah. Um, you know, I think it will not go into a legal battle again. I think that the clubs and UEFA will work together to find a solution that will benefit everyone. That's how I see it. And, you know, FIFA also have to play because they also want to have the Club World Cup. So, loads of things. I think there are interesting things in there. Uh, again, I think this verdict will not only benefit the big teams for the second part. I think there's a chance in there that smaller teams can also benefit from that. I think that would be super interesting. In any case, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Leave a comment below. Let, let me know your thoughts and I'll talk to you soon about other stuff concerning my soccer universe. Bye! Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!